Hello, Collective. My name is Kristen Simone Hansen, and welcome to Seagull Secrets. Okay, hello, Collective. Again, my name is Kristen and I am a healer. In this video, you're going to get a full rundown of how to love the Capricorn woman, who she is, and her secrets. Things that you maybe have never heard before. And hopefully get an idea about how to properly approach her and how to not make mistakes. If you would like to dive a little bit deeper in terms of understanding this energy or how to navigate love in general, you can join the Healing Circle. The link will be here and also in the bio. Last but not least, you guys know I am a global citizen and I love connecting with all of you on a worldly and global level. So drop in the comments where you are listening from. Now, let's get into this. This video is about the lovely, beautiful, deep and often misunderstood Capricorn woman. So let's start with some of the more typical surface level things to know about this woman that we've heard many times or you can find in other places. She is a woman of, of ambition, determination, and grit. Yes, she is a closet freak. <laughs> she is very no-nonsense and anti-BS. Okay. She's also usually pretty well-mannered and well put together in some way, shape, or form. So whether she is traditionally very beautiful, uh, if she is very beautiful, she's going to quite go for a statuesque kind of look, uh, usually something more exotic or underworldly. And if she is not necessarily traditionally beautiful, then she's going to be really well put together in terms of whatever class bracket that she exists within. She really likes to showcase her belief systems in the way that she looks and shows up in the world. Now, from here, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. <laughs> now that we're on the surface, let's get off of the surface where everybody looks at Capricorns. It's just the mountain goat. And we're going to dive now into the depths of this proper sea goat woman and the sea goat seductress and everything you need to know about her. All right. So to jump off of the leg of how it is that she presents herself in the world, you have two types of women here. You have one that is more, again, the sea goat seductress. And then you have the more um, general classic, there it is, the classic Cappy. You have the Seagoat Seductress and the classic Cappy, okay? Classic Capricorn. And uh, the merger between the two will be some form of elegance. These women, regardless of whether they are dominators in the sex industry, uh, closet dominatrixes, they are often elegant and uh, hold themselves to a high regard, even if she feels very down within herself, regardless of the class bracket that she exists in. I'm going to break down the classic Capricorn first, and then I'm going to go into the sedu seductress. The classic Capricorn usually comes off like a breath of fresh air. The image that she can portray is one that is very, um, wow, who's that? <laughs> she can come off like an authority, a natural authority, whether she realizes or not. There's something about her that kind of has her head a bit high and her energy is very light. She can make it seem like she doesn't like to carry much baggage and she can come off like she has it all together, but she's quick to laugh at herself. She likes to make jokes about herself. She can have a more serious look to her, but be very funny, very jokey in the way that she navigates. She can be very sarcastic. She also likes to wear a lot of bright colors um, or, or colors in general, but usually they tend to be bright colors. Uh, she can give off an air of, again, not wanting to hold on to too much baggage. Also that she doesn't want to get too deep with people and things. Um, she usually can be quite eclectic and have a vintage like attraction to things. Uh, she can have a really great record collection, a literal record collection, <laughs> and uh, be very kind of quirky as well as um, just very clean. You know, like the way that she navigates herself can be very 
fresh, very clean, very, uh, again, just really well put together and funny and uh, interesting. The more you get to know her, the more interesting she seems from the books that she reads, from the multitude of music that she listens to, to the funny places in which she gets all of her jokes. Uh, and the way in which she kind of has all of these friends, she's very, very social, but really spends a good amount of her time alone, um, or her alone time is very sacred to her. Her materials are very important to her, uh, from the things that she has around her, all of them have a lot of meaning to her, and every single piece in her uh, often color-coordinated closet is something that is very important uh, to the way in which she feels about herself. The biggest thing to keep in mind with the classic Capricorn is the way that she dresses is a reflection of her belief systems. So you will get to know her through paying attention to how it is that she shows up. Whether she is extremely fashion forward in her own uh, eclectic or niche kind of way, or if she is just kind of very uh, down to earth and very practical in her approach in terms of just wearing very average clothes and kind of just wearing her work clothes or whatever it may be, there is something that she showcases about what she does on a regular basis or how she feels about herself and the way that she dresses. Very uh, deliberate, even if it's very casual. Okay. So that's the classic Capricorn, uh, and she might steer away from her emotions because uh, going deep might make her a bit uncomfortable. Now, going into the Seagoat Seductress, very different. <laughs> Number one thing that is similar is this woman also is very big on making sure, while well, the sun is coming in quite bright, but this woman is also very big on making sure that the way that she looks and the way that she dresses is reflective of her belief systems. So when you see a seagoat seductress, usually this woman is statuesque. She is very refined. Uh, similar to Virgo, she can look like not one hair is out of place, but the difference between her and Virgo, Virgo is for Virgo, one hair really is not out of place. <laughs> for Capricorn, a lot of hairs can be out of place, but the way she makes it look it almost is, it looks like it's perfect even when it's not. Uh, she masters the art of refinement more than she does perfection. So it can read the same, but it's very different in the sense of she'll make it work for her. So instead of trying to have perfect uh, features or perfect body or perfect hair or perfect, uh, again, not one hair being out of place, she'll take the fact that all of her hair is kind of out of place or the stray hairs and she'll kind of put it up in a way that can be very artistic um, and very uh, natural but in a way that is very clean and very refined. So again think the difference between refinement and perfection. The Capricorn woman is refinement and not perfection. So it might read as perfection but it's about refinement and refinement is just pretty much taking what it is that you are and uh, making it the best of your ability. So uh, also in terms of her being statuesque, think of this woman taking clay and turning it into some kind of statue. That's pretty much how she navigates herself. Uh, in her mind, she's not trying to be perfect. She's just trying to look good. or <laughs> She's just trying to have herself put together. Um, but it can read that way, mainly because it's about her journey in terms of her looks is about making sure that she learns herself well enough to learn what works for her and what doesn't and how to just feel her best but in a way that is the most natural. So like I said, these women can read statues regardless of how tall or short they may be. Uh, there's something about them that can be very kind of exotic or something that is underworldly. She can seem like you don't necessarily know who she is or where she's from. She can pop up out of nowhere and feel like, what is that? Who is that? I don't really understand <laughs> what that is, you know? Um, a great example is Ava Gardner, uh, someone who actually is from the deep south and grew up quite poor, but yet and still when you saw her in the prime of her career, there was something about her that felt very worldly, like as if uh, she was not from um, where it is that she was from, like she came off like she came from some random remote village and some random place off the corner of the world that no one knew about and that was kind of the energy that she gave off. She was also notorious for her bare feet, uh, which is part of the reason why when they casted her as the barefoot Contessa, 
uh, it made really good sense for her because it aligned with her energy. I would suggest watching the Barefoot Contessa if you want to get a strong idea of the seagoat uh, seductress personality type. Uh, yes, it's played by an actual seagoat, uh, which is Ava Gardner, but the character itself is very Capricorn, uh, very much so. From uh, coming from the kind of background that actually was quite uh, destructive, uh, but something very traditional and homey about it, and then she kind of uh, trained herself to become her own individual uh, person, because again, Capricorn is about climbing that mountain. So for the seagoat seductress, usually what it is... Uh, I feel like I'm being drowned out by the sun. <laughs> Hopefully the sun will go away. But um, for the seagoat seductress in particular, it's not always necessarily about uh, climbing a ladder that is traditional in the sense of career. For her, it's more about climbing the ladder can be about the complexity of her personality. So this is the kind of woman that likes to explore. She can be very adventurous. She can be very mysterious. She can have a lot of layers to her. Capricorn women in general can have a lot of layers to them. But the Seiko, the, where there's the classic Capricorn, she wants to kind of hide those layers and present a very um, even-toned energy to the rest of the world. And you get close to her and you realize how multi-layered she is. The seagoat seductress wears those layers, she wears those complexities, and she likes showing up in the world as them. As I said, when it comes to this woman, you have to be aware of what it is that she is wearing. The, the, she can wear jewelry, she can uh, wear certain clothes. She, she usually isn't traditional, des, traditionally designer, but she is the kind of person that will wear various things that reflect her belief systems uh, in her home, uh, whatever she's reading or whatever it may be, this is the way in which she'll show you who it is that she is through her materials. Uh, you'll be able to see different parts of her belief systems and her personality through those things. The biggest thing about the Seagoat Seductress is understanding that you, trying to get both Capricorn types of women, trying to get too close to them too fast is a bad idea. It's easier to get closer to the classic Capricorn fast and quickly, uh, but also keep in mind she will more than likely keep you at the surface unless she feels like she can trust you or has a really good uh, sensual or physical bond with you. When it comes to, and then you'll realize that she's really down to earth and more like a best friend, that's the classic Capricorn. The seagoat seductress tends to be very weary if you come on too strong too quickly. So when it comes to this woman, it's really smart to kind of look at the things around her in order to get a full understanding of her. Despite how beautiful she may be, uh, because again, these women can really give off a statuesque kind of look to them, uh, usually there can be things about them that are quite either either insecure or they're not thinking about their looks as much as other people are. Uh, usually because for her, she's trying to look her best, but mainly because she wants to feel her best, uh, more than she is trying to look her best because she's trying to gain as much attention as she may be getting. Another thing about these women is they, they can give off a strong sexual demeanor, whether they mean to or not. And my suggestion, if you want to deal with one of them, is to not lead with that. Because <laughs> if you do, she will more than likely repel you. Because again, it's something that is, you know, a part of her energy. Both the classic Capricorn and the seagoat seductress, there's something about them that gives off an undertone of sexual energy, whether they want it to be there or not. So it is best to lead through uh, looking at what it, is, what it is that her interests are in order to get close to her. If you lead in that direction, she will either simply see you as that, so use you for that reason, or she will just simply repel you um, for feeling as if though you're doing that to her. And that brings me to my next point, a part of the reason why is because these women are big on respect. So even if she is in a down place in her life or she's dealing with a lot of self-insecurity, she really wants to project to the, to the world that she has a lot of self-respect. So if you compromise her self-respect, it's a surefire way to pretty much lose with her unless you are able to bind her into some kind of long-term connection and then you can get away with it that way. But this video is about being healthy to the Capricorn woman, not unhealthy. Uh, so we're st staying on the healthy side. Supporting her self-respect, uh, understanding her values, and uh, pretty much supporting her for those values or complimenting her for those values, it can get you very far. Um, 
understanding that her materials are not things that she looks at as shallow. So uh, when you understand her, uh, the importance of the material things that she has around her and showcase that you understand the importance of those material things, uh, then you can get in her good graces. If you feel like you are interacting with a Capricorn woman that is very insecure, then her, her materials might reflect something that is not authentic to who she actually is. And so if you can see that, I would say pay attention to the things that she truly desires, who it is that you know she actually is. For example, if she is insecure, she could have uh, a home where she surrounds herself with traditional uh, luxury items to make herself seem like she is good enough. If she, and if you are close to her and you realize that that's not actually what she feels, and in fact, maybe uh, she likes things a little bit more eclectic, uh, it would be smart to not force that down her throat, but to lean into that energy and add to her material things by buying her something that aligns with that energy. Also, another thing as well when it comes to dating this woman, uh, understanding that she has one hell of a deep set of emotions. The classic Capricorn is going to steer away from her emotions and she's going to want to kind of keep them at a distance. If you're dealing with the classic Capricorn, the smartest thing to do is to come in as a friend, as a buddy. Now, you can definitely come in as someone interested in dating her, but the kind of relationship dynamic you guys end up having with each other, the best friend kind of, uh, you know, cool kind of energy is the thing that will work in your best favor in terms of getting her to open up. Make her feel like she's not uh, completely weak in terms of her vulnerability and as if her vulnerability is because she can completely and totally trust you. When it comes to the seagoat seductress, you're dealing with somebody who's a little bit different. She likes her emotions. She likes to be tied and connected to those things and she can also know how to use them as a weapon. So when dealing with the seagoat seductress, to make her feel vulnerable, it's more in a traditional sense of making her feel safe, making her feel like you can understand her. Uh, she often feels misunderstood. She often feels like no one gets her. This is the kind of woman that can uh, turn people down constantly because she doesn't always necessarily give relationships enough of time, mainly because she's constantly searching for feeling completely understood in her multitude of layers. and that she wants someone who understands her beyond the surface. And depending on how this woman shows up in the world, she can have a, a strong tie to how people view her through her career or her status. But underneath that is a multitude of layers that she wants to be uh, opened up, I guess, or uh, being able to feel safe next to an individual that can allow uh, those things to come together. Both of these women in general are very deep, mainly because they've experienced a lot of things in their lives, and they also are deep thinkers. They're big on wisdom, and they're big on uh, self-actualization and depth. When you think of Capricorn women, their biggest secret is the fact that they are very deep. Uh, they have a lot to say and they have experienced things that have created a multitude, a very complex way of thinking and seeing the world and navigating their emotions. Again, the classic Capricorn is not emotional in the same traditional sense and it will make her uncomfortable. So coming in as her friend is important and allowing her to open up through more of a wisdom, more of an intellectual uh, exchange, whereas, or a, you know, more like a um, kind of very grounded, very down to earth. Yeah, I've been through X, Y, and Z, and it, it, it taught me uh, A, B, C kind of conversation. Versus a seagoat seductress, she enjoys these things, like I said, so she wants to feel like she's having more of a deep conversation, one of depth, one where she feels like she is growing and expanding and it's not shallow. Uh, when you understand this energy through, this, through the lens of Capricorn stereotypes, one of the things with Capricorn stereotypes is understanding that this woman seeks to be um, of a certain status. 
also that this woman tends to be very driven. So when understanding those two things, the way it can manifest itself in terms of the feminine principle, especially with the Sigo Seductress, is this is someone who desires to be, who ends up becoming very complex because she's constantly searching for more. She's constantly diving deeper. She's constantly trying to expand and understand herself. And so that is how that um, climbing the mountain kind of energy tends to manifest in her. So what it ends up showing up as is someone who is always on the prowl for something deeper. She's always searching for more. She's always expanding herself. She can be very adventurous. She can be very well-rounded and very much a worldly woman. Uh, both women can come off very sophisticated because of this, because of their layers. They can have both street smarts as well as academic smarts. They can come from the school of hard knocks and then refine that energy in order to create a very specific personality type. Whether they come from a high background or a low background, there is something about them that comes off full circle. And they deeply desire to be both. They really want to be... Uh, grounded in a sense of sitting at the intersection of the world where they don't have too much mess on them, which is the desire for refinement is because they've seen hell and they don't want to go back there. And so <laughs> they're always kind of thinking, how can they navigate their lives and their situations where they have as much peace and clarity as possible? but then also they need things to feel very real and very authentic and deeply have a strong desire to feel unconditionally loved and unconditionally understood. When we look at Capricorn stereotypes, we think of things like uh, loyalty, the undying love, the woman that's gonna be there for you forever, the ride or die. So how this manifests in reality outside of the Capricorn stereotype is it doesn't necessarily mean that a Capricorn woman is gonna be with the same person for a very long time. And in fact, these women can kind of go through phases of their lives where they're literally just rejecting a lot of people, <laughs> where they can, um, want to be alone for a very long time and a part of the reason why is because they're looking for the real deal and that manifests itself uh, in the practical sense or the desire for a long-term connection manifests itself in a sense of because she does not want to be in a situation where she has to disconnect emotionally because it can be very difficult for her to disconnect emotionally once she's invested she also likes things to be consistent and she does not Although she is a cardinal sign, so she is always willing to change and grow and evolve and search and expand and explore. In her love life, she wants someone who is always willing to be there and grow and expand with her. She does not desire to go through the traumatic experience of having to uh, invest and then disconnect. Uh, frivolous relationships are very hard for her. Uh, if you are dealing with a Capricorn woman, that seems like promiscuity is something that she's uh, fine with or uh, singlehood. It's because she deep down is waiting for the right person and she does not want to invest in anything that is not completely right because when she's in it, she gives her whole self. She gives her soul, her body. Think earth. Think pentacle energy. You're talking about someone that can... Earth is the ground of all of the things together in one. So you're talking about a woman with a lot of soul, whether she is the classic Capricorn or she is the Seagoat Seductress. The Seagoat Seductress wears her soul. The classic Capricorn keeps it under wraps, but she very much just has, has just as much. So with all of her soul and with all of her depth, with all of her triumph and with all of that she has overcome, she really wants to feel well rested with the same individual for as long as she can and not have to disconnect from that energy. She will not invest in things that she does not feel like have longevity, which is why she can be the kind of person at various times of her life that can seem like she can just drop people very quickly or she can come off very cold and disconnected. But it is because she feels like the relationship does not have a long haul or she feels like she can't see a future in it or she feels like it's only going to end in a bad way. The greatest way to keep this woman tied to you is to show that you have the ability to not uh, give up on her and not give up on the relationship and that you're willing to go the distance. She needs to feel like the biggest 
return on her investment because love for her is the biggest investment. She needs to feel like it has the biggest return, which is something that makes her life better and not makes her life worse, which is someone that understands all that she gives and can give those things back, mainly because she is such a giver in love. And she has all the things that can keep a relationship going for a very long time. And she just needs to know that it's tied with the right individual. So if you're going to invest energy in this particular woman and you don't have an interest of staying forever, make it known if you make it, mainly because she is the kind of woman that knows how to separate sex and love. That's another uh, Capricorn woman stereotype. And it pretty much is uh, reign supreme in terms of unless she has... Um, deep eighth house placements or Scorpio placements, she can struggle with it. But for the most part, especially she has a lot of air and fire placements. These women are very good at separating sex and love. As in, she will categorize the relationship or the connection with zero thought. <laughs> and it can come off on a stereotypical level as if it's strictly business, if you get what I'm saying. Um, but this gets misconstrued as, as being, you know, Capricorn stereotypes with her being so focused on her work and she's so emotionally disconnected. The emotional disconnect comes from trying to compartmentalize the ways of the emotions. One of the most powerful things about Capricorn energy is the way that it knows how to navigate and control emotion. That is how it moves into Aquarius, which is the water bearer, the person that bears water without getting wet. It's because it moves through Capricorn who knows how to navigate both the emotions and uh, the practical world. And it's something that is difficult for her because every behind every Capricorn woman was once a very sensitive young girl who had to learn how to be both strong and emotionally available and stiff her lip in moments that were very painful for her to deal with. So this emotional navigation comes from a space of her having to learn how to uh, control and understand her emotions in a way so that they do not work against her. So she becomes deeper instead of more surface level sensitive. It's important to understand that and do not get that energy wrong because if you assume that she is cold to her core, she will under she will see that and she will disconnect from you because she will see it as you misunderstanding her. Most of her disconnections come from her seeing that the other person is misunderstanding her. And if she feels misunderstood, if she feels like she is not being appreciated, or she will process that as not being appreciated, her self-respect, which usually most people see as Capricorn pride, will come full circle and she'll disconnect from the dynamic because she'll know how to separate those emotions. When this woman falls for you, she falls extremely deep. When she's in it, she's extremely in. And it's very hard to get her out. So that's a part of the reason why if she can maintain her footing and have the relationship be on the surface. She's not necessarily fully investing and she's not the type to wear a heart on, the, on her sleeve unless she knows that it's an investment that she can actually stay in. She is very afraid of going through the kind of emotional vulnerability that will break her heart, mainly because this stops her in her tracks. In general, Capricorn women are always different from wherever they came from. So usually some of the things people tie to Aquarius women is something that tends to be the reality of Capricorn women where they are very different. There's something unorthodox about them, mainly because they have this authoritative 10 health, 10 house energy where inevitably they are meant to be different than where they are so that they can seek more, so they can go out and search for higher realms. Another thing with this woman is if you know her, she tends to be quite nice. <laughs> she tends to be very sweet, uh, even if she looks vicious or she can look very, um, uh, she might even look pretentious or she might look difficult to speak to or talk to. The seagoat seductress can come off intimidating and sensuous, <laughs> might wear a lot of dark clothes or um, again, look like a woman who has a lot of intense beauty or out of worldly beauty, unapproachable. Uh, but when you get close to her, you realize she's actually quite sweet, very nice, very simple. Both um, of these women are very big on things being realistic around them. They like things to be very real. That's one of the big differences between the Capricorn woman and the Capricorn man is the Capricorn woman values authenticity to a very high degree. If you've ever been in love with one of these women, she tends to be very real in her energy. She likes to be very real with you. She likes things to be as authentic as possible. If she is more of a professional and she has to put on a face, 
for her, she'll put on a face simply to put on a face and then ground herself back in her energy where everything is as raw and as authentic as possible. These women can also get to a place if they're low vibrational to a place where they're a little bit grotesque in a sense that they can have kind of a, a very hardcore, um, like Torian like intensity where they like things to feel really grounded and very realistic. If she feels surface level or is coming off as, um, a brown noser or kind of putting on a face, it's because she's uncomfortable or she feels like uh, she doesn't know how to really be herself. She struggles a lot with feeling like she doesn't know how to be herself around people at various times because she has so many layers. She's dealt with so many things. She has so much going on inside, but she always has this call to status. So whether she wants the status or not, status finds her, and this can create an imbalance in her energy where she herself feels like she's never really comfortable in the environments that she places her in, herself in socially. Uh, so that's something to be aware of, that um, she deeply desires to feel comfortable and to be completely embraced for who it is that she is and understood for who it is that she is. She really, really uh, does not like the idea of someone uh, who wants her for her status or only sees her through the lens of that status or doesn't understand the complexity of uh, her wants, her needs, or her emotions. Um, she also is very strong, relentlessly strong. This is the kind of woman, especially the classic Capricorn, she's the kind of woman that can be dressed in pink, hot pink from head to toe, and you get close to her and she's the kind of woman that can literally, you know, punch a grown man in his face and fight a bear and then go back to drinking a glass of wine like it didn't happen, you know? <laughs> very tough, tough as nails. Um, but again, very sweet, very soft, very uh, simple. Uh, really just doesn't want to rock the boat and likes things to feel predictable because she herself is unpredictable. She herself is, uh, there's a lot going on internally. So she likes her external to feel very uh, serene in that sense. Uh, she does not like, she can entertain drama from time to time, especially the classic Capricorn. She likes to be in the know. She likes to be in the social world. She likes to know what's going on. She likes to network and navigate. The se uh, seductress is the opposite. She usually tends to be a little bit more introverted and she tends to be out of the scene. So uh, she tends to be that kind of mysterious in and out. Sometimes you see her, sometimes you don't. Almost like, like again, a sea, a sea creature, you know, she... Imagine what it would feel like to actually see a real sea goat, how uncomfortable that would be. <laughs> it's like, what, what is that thing, you know? So she can kind of give off this energy of this random creature that kind of shows up and then disappears, right? You see her sometimes, you don't see her. You, who is she really? They have big social media platforms. There's something about them that could read quite mysterious. Uh, or, or the classic Capricorn who tends to be more social. There's something about it that's mysterious because you know she's holding a lot back. Uh, she's putting on a persona or she can put on an image strictly to be professional or do what it is that she's supposed to do and then disconnect uh, versus the seagoat seductress kind of does things in a way that is a little bit more purposeful and um, even if she's showing a lot, there's still something about her that remains reserved or underneath the surface. Um, these women are not necessarily always trying to come off secretive or mysterious. Usually for them, they just feel like there is information that people just don't need to know. Um, and they tend to hold that. Uh, a part of their elegance is feeling like there's a lot that they kind of keep to themselves. They know when to say things, when not to say things, and they're always kind of going through whatever it is that they're going through in their minds to navigate the world in a strategic way. They're always thinking about how to navigate their social lives or their public lives strategically. They are very good in business as well, um, although can struggle because they can find themselves in career endeavors that don't actually serve them. And then with time, they grow to understand what actually works for them. Again, these are the kinds of women that can get positions of power quite easily. You can see them randomly, like in celebrities, you can see them randomly pop up and be with some big celebrity guy out of nowhere. Uh, there is also the addressing the Capricorn stereotype that these women date up. 
uh, this is something that is it works in various degrees. So a low vibrational Capricorn woman will date up strictly for status's sake, not necessarily financial sake, but more uh, that's more like Libra and Aquarius and um, Cancer. A uh, Capricorn woman, especially because Cancer was without the home, so Cancer is always looking for the home. A Capricorn woman will date for status. So it's not necessarily the more practical things. It's more like to increase a, a narrative of herself. That's a low vibrational Capricorn woman. And then what will end up happening is she'll date for status and then try to navigate the space in a sense of um, uh, like as if the status increased her status and then she'll move within it basically as if she was always in it. Uh, next to that, a high vibrational Capricorn woman does not date up. She does date for increase. So what does that mean? That means in a sense of she's looking to be in a relationship with someone that increases her and does not decrease her. So it's not necessarily up. And, and that's where people can be a little bit confused about their partners because they can see them with people that don't seem like they're the best decisions or whatever it may be. What it is, is she's looking for an increase. So if it's an emotional increase, if it's a, a peace of mind increase, if it's a love increase, this is the kind of woman that is looking to live a life that is the most fulfilling for her on a health level. So if the partner represents a healthy life uh, or would provide her with healthy love, then she will put herself in that relationship before any other relationship. So yeah, I think I've been kind of talking about the Capricorn woman a lot. I think I, I covered a lot. Um, I don't know. There's so much to be said about this damsel. So uh, yeah, let me know you guys' thoughts and if you want to know anything else and if you want to uncover more. I love you.